What we saw in the last section was that a matrix has an LU factorization if and only if its leading principal submatrices are all non-singular. But that doesn't mean that we can't use a, an LU factorization-like algorithm to factor a matrix when it merely is, has linearly independent columns. So let's have a look at how we fix that. And what we're going to see is that in the process of fixing this, we are going to have to exchange rows in matrices. And the vehicle for exchanging rows of matrices, at least the linear algebra vehicle, is multiplication by a permutation matrix. Now, what is a permutation matrix? Let's have a look at a quick example. Let's look at the matrix 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. And if we apply that to the vector 0, 1, 2, what do we get? Well, this here picks out the second entry. This picks out the last entry. And this picks out the first entry. So what has happened is that we've shuffled the entries in this vector around. Okay. Hmm. What does this look like? This really looks like a shuffling of the identity matrix, right? We've taken either the columns or the rows, but let's focus on the rows. We have, mo we have moved the rows of the identity matrix around. And as a matter of fact, we can look at this particular matrix as the standard basis vector E1 transposed, and then E2 transposed, and then E0 transposed. Now we know that if we multiply this times a vector, it picks out the entry indexed with 1, the entry indexed with 2, the, en the entry indexed with 0. Okay. So standard basis vectors can be used to pick out entries in a vector when you take the dot product. So, the other thing you notice is that if we had only had these indices, then we would have already known in what order to place the entries in the vector. Right? This here says pick out the entry index with 1, index with 2, index with 0. So we could say, hmm, let's define this to be the permutation matrix defined by the vector 1, 2, 0. And that then is equal to that. So let's generalize this idea. Okay? In general, we can say, given a permutation vector, and let's index that with the first entry there, the second entry, and so forth, where um, this is merely a permutation of the uh, integers 0 through n minus 1. Then we define the permutation matrix P of P to be the matrix, the first um, standard basis vector would be index with pi 0 then index with pi 1, and so forth. And the important thing here is that we don't actually need to store this entire matrix, which of course would mean storing a whole bunch of zeros that aren't really necessary. It suffices to just store the entries, um, the indices that define the permutation. And now we have an instrument by which we uh, can permute the rows of a vector. And obviously, if we then apply that to a matrix, what will happen is that you similarly permute the rows of that matrix.